fourth class lecture two by Assistant Prof. Mustafa Al Khatib. Inbite, negative overbite, inherited developmental or acquired malocclusion, whereby no vertical overlap exists between maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth. Anterior open bite or no vertical contact is exhibited between the maxillary and mandibular posterior teeth. It is subdivided into dental open bite, which is a localized open bite that involves only few teeth due to digit sucking habit or other local factors. While the skeletal open bite caused by divergence of the skeletal mandibular or and maxillary planes leading to increased facial height as in case of posterior rotational growth of the mandible. It may be anterior or may be posterior open bite. Here is the anterior uh, and the skeletal open bite due to the skeletal basis or posterior rotational growth of the mandible, as we see here. Deep bite. The deep bite or excessive overbite it is a type of malocclusion in which the vertical overlap of anterior teeth is increased beyond the ideal relationship means it is more than the normal range which is 2 to 4 million. It is frequently associated with decreased vertical facial dimension because of the deep bite. So it is frequently associated with decreased vertical facial dimensions and subdivided into non-traumatic deep bite which is deep bite is still associated with teeth teeth relation as we can see here which is the vertical overlap more than four millim and the lower incisal edge during centric occlusion it exceeds the middle third of the palatal aspect of the upper incisor so the other type of deep bite is a traumatic deep bite. The traumatic deep bite in which the deep bite associated with the impingement of the mandibular incisors in the mucosal palatal area of the maxillary incisors commonly is seen in malocclusion with extremely deep bite as in CV class 2 malocclusion. Here is the deep bite and the lower incisal edges uh, cause a trauma to the palatal mucosa okay and the lower incisors impinge on the palatal mucosa this is traumatic deep bite by by traumatic deep bite usually seen in some class 2 division 2 malocclusions with minimal overjet the retroclined maxillary incisors may impinge in the cretinized tissue labial to the mandibular incisors causing jabber recession at the same time there is a trauma to the palatal mucosa caused by lower incisors. So the upper incisors impinge on the labial cartilage mucosa causing gum recession in the lower anterior segment. And the lower incisors also cause a trauma to the palatal mucosa, palatal to the upper incisors. Therefore, it is called bi-traumatic. Single tooth anterior crossbite. A single tooth anterior crossbite when the lower incisor includes occludes labially to the upper incisor or the upper incisor occludes lingually to the lower incisors this is called single tooth anterior cross by unilateral posterior cross bite can be divided into false and true unilateral posterior cross bite the False unilateral posterior crossbite caused by narrowing of the maxilla or widening of the mandible, leading to cusp to cusp relation. Then the patient tries to get maximum intercuspidation by deviation of the mandible to one side during the path of the closure, leading to unilateral posterior false crossbite. When we ask the patient to occlude, 
from opening to closure of the mouth, there will be a shift in the lower dental midline and coincide with the upper dental midline because there will be a deflective contact of the posterior teeth during the pass of occlusion. So there will be a shift in the dental midline. In case of true unilateral posterior crossbite, the affected it affects only one side of the dental arch due to uh, asymmetry present in the dental arch and usual doesn't associated with doesn't associated with division of the mandible. So the true there will be no shift in the dental midline during the path of closure, while the false Unilateral posterior crossbite it is associated with the shift in the dental midline. This true unilateral posterior crossbite type, there will be no shift in the lower dental midline and coincide with the upper dental midline during the path of closure, and there will be no deflection of contact during the path of closure. It is true unilateral posterior crossbite. A posterior crossbite caused by severe maxillary collapse or and mandibular widening. There is no mandibular division during the path of occlusion. Skeletal and dental crossbite. The most important thing, we should consider two things. First is the palatal arch width, and second is the dental arch width the transpilatal arch width and the interdental arch width. In case of skeletal crossbite, the palatal arch width here is inadequate and quite less than the dental arch width. This is called skeletal crossbite. This dimension, transpilatal width, is less than transdental width. While in the dental crossbite, the palatal arch width is, is uh, adequate and nearly equal to the dental arch width. Transpalatal width is nearly equal to the transdental width or dental arch width. When it is nearly equal, it is dental crossbite. When the transpalatal width is less than the interdental or transpalatal width, it is skeletal. So, the dental crossbite is caused by distortion of the dental arch where the jaws are of normal position. Functional uh, crossbite, it is a crossbite due to the functional shift of the mandible. It should be treated earlier and if recognized because of uncorrected through crossbite may result of modification of a growth. Which is functional means it is false unilateral posterior crossbite. Scissor bite. It is several adjacent posterior teeth uh, overlap vertically in the habitual occlusion with their antagonists without contact of their occlusal surfaces. The division of the affected teeth from their ideal position could occur either in the maxillary buccal or mandibular lingual direction, where mandibular dentition are completely located, uh, completely contained within the maxillary dentition and habitual occlusion. The lower teeth occlude more lingually to the upper posterior teeth. Therefore, it is called a scissor bite, which is similar to a scissor, while well, this is the normal buccal overjet while here there is scissor bite because the lower teeth include lingually or palatally to the maxillary posterior teeth. Scissor bite. Here is a case of scissor bite where the lower posterior teeth include lingually or palatally to the upper posterior teeth or upper posterior teeth, maxillary posterior teeth include buccally to the lower mandibular posterior teeth. This is called scissor bite. Now spacing. Spacing 
uh, it is a dental when a dental arch with the spacing of more than accepted range two millim it is either localized as we can see here where there is a space between the teeth or maybe generalized which affects the whole dental arch mostly caused by abnormal soft tissue function like tongue thrust okay here is the generalized generalized because multiple spacing between the teeth and here is a localized where is a central diastema a cut between the teeth uh, imbrication when there is overlapping of the incisors and canines in the same arch usually due to the crowding on the midline shift I guess when the upper and lower dental midline are not coincide and subdivided into number one associated with mandibular division during closure as in case of premature occlusal con contacts or maybe not associated with mandibular division during closure as in case of unilateral missing of teeth or crowding midline shift may be due to shift of the upper or lower teeth or sometime may both of them and it is very important to smile that during diagnosis treatment planning especially to choose tooth or teeth to be extracted in addition to that it is important to differentiate between midline shift of the dentition and the face because we may see one of them or some time both of them midline shift of the face mostly caused by normal uh, may, uh, caused by abnormal skeletal factor like unilateral hyperplasia of the mandible or division of the nose midline of the dentition mostly associated with unilateral extraction or congenital missing or um, impaction of a tooth so when there is a shift in the dental midline there um, may be due to early extraction or exfoliation of the dentition or maybe due to missing teeth or impaction of teeth or any other local factor infra position or infra inclusion it is a situation in which the tooth or a group of teeth is positioned below the occlusal plane commonly due to a deleterious habit or to ankylosis supra occlusion the supra occlusion of the teeth usually it is the situation whereby an or an on opposed or non including tooth extends beyond the occlusal plane as we can see here so the supra occlusion or supra eruption and when the patient occlude in centric occlusion the tooth will exceed the occlusal plane towards the opposing space this is due to the opposing space and there is no stopper to stop the tooth for further eruption now dental retrusion and dental retroclination what is the difference dental retrusion is the posterior position of a tooth or a group of teeth but keeping the long axis with the normal inclination dental retrusion keeping the normal inclination of the tooth but uh, they are more backwards positioning of the whole tooth while dental retroclination it is posterior positioning of tooth or a group of teeth but their long axis are tipped labiolingually long axis tipped labiolingually in a lingual direction this is called retroclination so retro, retro, retro retrusion is maintaining the long axis or retroclination uh, is uh, the tooth is tipped labiopalatally not maintaining the long axis this is the difference uh, 
a tooth that can be retrusive without being retroclined. It is positioned too far posteriorly but has a normal inclination. Now, proclination versus protrusion. What is the difference between proclination and protrusion? The dental proclination, it is anterior positioning of the tooth, anterior positioning of the tooth, or a group of teeth, but their long axis are tipped, but their long axis are tipped labially. Long axis tipped labially. This is called proclination. While the protrusion when the anterior positioning of the tooth or a group of teeth, but keeping their long axis with the normal inclination, keeping their long axis with normal inclination, this is called protrusion. When keeping the long axis, this is protrusion. When not keeping the long axis, and there will be a tipping in pilotal labial direction, it is called proclination. This is proclination and this is protrusion when there is keeping the long axis of the tooth. Now the impaction. Occurs when eruption is completely blocked by other teeth due to the crowding. It tends to affect the last teeth to erupt in each segment, as in case of the canine. Here, we see impaction of the canine, or sometimes the last tooth, which is the third molar, or wisdom tooth. Rotation. It is a type of malocclusion in which there is a rotation of the tooth about its long axis. Most evidence when viewing the tooth from an occlusal perspective mostly caused by crowding and subdivided into mild crowding, uh, mild rotation, sorry, like this, mild rotation. Okay, like this, mild rotation, which is less than 90 degree and can be treated easily by a removable orthodontic appliance using a couple four system. Or maybe the rotation is severe. Maybe the rotation is severe, uh, which is more than 90 degree must be treated by fixed orthodontic treatment. So when it is mild, less than 90 degree, it is, can be treated by couple four system by removable appliance. And when it is severe, more than 90 degree, or even more than this, which is 90 degree, can be treated by fixed appliance. Removable, treated, and when the rotation is severe, treated by the fixed appliance. But even the mild can be treated by fixed. Displacement or ectopic eruption. Displacement, it is abnormal position of the tooth, crown and root in the dental arch. So when the crown and the root are outside the dental arch in an aberrant position, so it is called displacement. Overlapping of the teeth. Overlapping, it is abnormal position of the crown of the tooth in the dental arch while there is normal position of the root in the jaw. So there is overlapping of the crown while there is normal position of the root in the jaw. When the overlapping uh, of the teeth, and which involve the central lateral and the canines, and the overlapping in the same direction to called imbrication. Which is a type of malocclusion.